I solemnly swear that I will faithfully, diligently, and impartially execute and perform the duties required of me as a member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. The Queen's Men. For the first time, authentic stories of the world-famous Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Tales of men who for almost a hundred years have helped to keep peace in Canada. The Queen's Men. The Queen's Men, true stories of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Names have been changed for family protection. And now transcribe The Queen's Men. Uncle Wally? Hey, hmm. Uncle Wally, what you doing? Well, now, Davy, what does it look like I'm doing? Oh, you're cleaning your gun, eh, Uncle Wally? <laughs> What you getting it all polished up for? Oh, just so it'll look nice. You gonna shoot somebody with it? Eh? Hey. <laughs> oh, maybe a fox or two one of these days out on the edge of the town. Those foxes that have been getting at Hank uh, Jenkins' chicken, you know? Gee, that doesn't sound very exciting. Mm. How many bad guys did you kill with that gun when you were a Mountie, huh, Uncle Wally? Uh, oh, oh, now, wait a minute, Davy. You, you ought to know by now a Mountie's got lots to do besides shooting off his gun. Well, remember what you promised last night when Pop got talking about the gold rush? Eh, uh, the gold rush. Oh, let's see now. I, I didn't promise I'd go prospecting with you, did I? No, gee whiz. You said sometime soon you'd tell me a story about how the Mounties caught that big train robber. Didn't, didn't you say you caught him? Uh, nope, not that time. Oh, but that was a long time ago. I can't remember just who it was caught him. I remember the big fuss there was at the time, but... Uh, oh, I'm not sure I can just remember all the details accurately. Oh, well, uh, tell me anyway, Uncle Wally. Tell me the story. Ah, uh, well, there were a lot of robberies in those gold rush days, you know. Lots of train holdups when that gold was getting toted around the country. You know, something peculiar just seemed to happen to people when it came to gold. They wanted that gold. Some of them got it honestly, and some of them didn't. Well, how about... Hey, oh, just look at that gun gleam in the sunlight, eh? Will you hate and see a beauty? Well, tell me <laughs> about the guy that didn't want it honest. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> you know, it sure beats me the way you kids are rather here about the dishonest one, you know? Yeah, but if it wasn't for them, the Mounties wouldn't stay in business, would they? Ah, uh, well, now, I guess you're right about that, Davy. Well, uh, let's see now, how did that case go? That one where the gang held up the CPR train twice in a row. Yeah. Yeah. What was that fellow's name now? Uh, oh, well, well, uh, we'll say it was Mercer. Now, this Mercer, he was smart, you know. He got away with it twice, with the Mounties on his tail the second time, too. Uh, now, wait, it happened the first time. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I, I probably can't remember it to tell well enough. Oh, I... sure you can, Uncle Wally. Sure you can. Uh, you, you really want to hear about it, You eh? bet I do. Come on, Uncle Wally. Tell me how you caught him. Well, I didn't catch him. I, I was new on the force then, and I only heard about it afterwards. It started with the express messenger on the CPR train one rainy night. Dark and rainy and no moon showing. And that train was highballing it out of Woods River with a safe full of gold dust in the baggage car. The express messenger... Uh, oh, I remember him now. His name was Hugh. He was sitting there in the baggage car making up a report and chatting with the mail clerk. And both of them thinking they were as safe as a pair of babies, I guess. Yeah. Now, uh, well, I, I'm not sure what they were thinking, but uh, you can just kind of picture them, can't you? rattling along in that baggage car, 
With the light from the lantern showing up the streaks of rain on the window. Engineers really stepping it up tonight. Feels like we're doing 60. This bumpy stretch of track really throws you around. That's gonna be a messy looking report, isn't it? The way it's hopping around on the table. Well, I'm just about finished. Got the money and the gold dust counted and back in the safe, nice and secure. Well, I'd rather count mail any day. Man, look at that rain come down. Hey, what's happening? Feels like we're stopping. Now, why would Jeff be breaking the train halfway between here and nowhere? Well, maybe there's a cow on the track. On a night like this? Don't be crazy. All sensible cows are at home in bed. Maybe he's stopping so I can get this report finished easier. Well, Jeff knows what he's doing, I guess. I hope so. I've been on this run for two years, though. I never remember stopping here, rain or no rain. Say, how do you count gold dust, anyway? It's all been weighed and packaged. Count up the packages. Oh, I see. Darn funny thing, stopping here. What are you going to do? Just um, open the door and have a look out. Can't see anything tonight. That's a queer one. What is? A lantern. I can just see it through the rain. Someone's coming down the road bed alongside the train carrying... Who's there? Say, you sound jittery. You don't suppose... Well, what do you know? It's only Jeff. The engineer? Yeah, I can see him now. He's carrying the lantern and he's got some guys with him. What's up, Jeff? You run out of coal? Jeff! Speak up, boy! All right, get your hands up or I'll blow your heads up. That means you too. Now, listen here. Don't argue with him, Hugh. Do as he says. That's right. Do as I say and I won't harm a hair of your head. Harry, bud, take the engineer into the next car and keep him covered. What you you do is the express messenger. I am. Then you stay right here. The other one, you. You come on outside. Come on, nothing's going to happen to you. My buddies are just going to keep you company for a few minutes. That's a good fellow. Okay, boys, get them both out here. No rough stuff unless they start it. Me? I'm coming in out of the rain. Oh, some night. All right, keep them in the air, mister. What are you after? I'll give you three guesses. Where's the gold dust? In the safe over there? How'd you get on the train? I'm asking the questions. But since you're interested, we boarded the tender at Shafter when you slowed down. So that's the safe, huh? Well, I'll let you get it open. Well, I, I, I don't know the combination. Come on, come on. Stop playing games. Open it up. Let's all stay friendly. I guess you mean business. Yeah, that's right. Okay. You don't mind if I lower my hands, then? Lower them straight at the safe and nowhere else. I'd feel real bad if I had to shoot you. All I want is the gold, then you guys can all get on your way again. Operator, get me the Mounties. Headquarters at Dunville, Saskatchewan. Hurry, please. Yes, sir. Say, Jeff, order me a cup of coffee at the counter, will you? No, don't bother bringing it over here. I won't be long. RCM Police Headquarters, Sergeant Charno speaking. Hello, Sergeant. My name's Hugh McNaught. I'm a CPR express messenger. Yes? There's just been a robbery. Robbery? Where? On the CPR train just outside of Marsh Neck, maybe 50 miles. I was guarding a shipment of gold dust heading for Vancouver. And the gang, there were three of them it looked like, boarded the train at Shafter and held up the engineer and forced... Can you give me a description of them, McNaught? Just the one who robbed me. I couldn't see the others. They were outside. It was raining. This fellow was tall, about 6'1 or 2, broad-faced, dark. How was he dressed? Something dark. I can't remember very well. Dark overcoat, navy blue or black. You say he forced you to open the safe and then clean it out? Yes. Then he and the rest of the gang made us all take our places on the train. Ordered the engineer to start her up. We stopped here at Marsh Neck. First place we could get to a phone. We'll get to work on it. We want to speak to you personally as soon as you can get here. Okay, Sergeant. I'll stop making the arrangements now. Have you notified CPR officials yet? Yes, sir. The mail clerk's calling them now from another phone. Right. We'll see you as soon as you can make it. Goodbye. Baker. Something happened, Sergeant? It sure has. Train robbery outside of Marsh Neck. They got a safe full of gold dust. Look, I've got a hunch. Can you put your hands on that file on the gang that pulled the robbery last year at Stevenson? Yeah, it should be in here somewhere. Well, that was the one where they held up the engineer and fireman and cut the engine away from the rest of the train. Yeah, the stakes were gold that time, too. As I remember, there were three in the gang. Some similarity to tonight's job? Yeah, there might be. That bunch last year made a clean getaway. They got across the border. Uh, Stevenson. Yeah, here it is. I just put it down here, will you? Yeah, sure. When did this happen? Half an hour ago. Now, where's the description? Yeah, here. 
The robber was tall and described as swarthy, broad features, tattoo on right arm. How come they got that piece of information? He was captured in the States after another train robbery. The report on that is here somewhere. Captured by a local sheriff. Yeah, here it is. Sheriff Thompson had to camp all night with his prisoner, bound him with bail wire. The prisoner escaped during the night. Then that sheriff's had a good look at him. Yeah. So is the express messenger who got robbed tonight. If we got the two of them together, the descriptions might check. Then I'd better contact the old man. If they're heading for the border again, we've got to work fast. All right, men. I've chosen the five of you because you've been stationed here longer than the rest, and you know this country. Sergeant Tarno will be in charge. Here are your instructions. Now, hold up the map, please, Constable Baker. Sir? Thank you. I've been in touch with the British Columbia police who are covering this area to the north and east along with Indian guides. We've sent several parties out to the western part of this province here. Now then, the vital gap is the country to the south between the Canadian Pacific Railway line and the United States border. You understand? Yes, sir. Therefore, Sergeant, you'll proceed with your party as quickly as possible to Bullen's Ranch at Crystal Lake. From there, establish a line of pickets with a view to blocking any attempt on the part of the bandits to cross the boundary into the United States. Take the shortest cutoff to Douglas Lake. Well, your horses are waiting. Good luck, men. Whoa, hold still there, Beth. She doesn't like the rain. I don't blame her, getting hauled out of bed in the middle of a night like this. You all set, Davies? Yes, Sergeant. Yeah, hold on to your mount steady now, man. We'll have to ride them hard to reach Stephentown by morning, but that's my goal. We'll be glad of the rain. It'll keep them from getting too heated. Hey, uh, Sergeant. Yes, Davies? This turns out to be the same gang that got across the border last year, and we get them while we're rich men. What do you mean, Davies? Why, uh, they pulled a string of robberies in the States, remember? It's a $20,000 reward offered down there for them. Yeah, you're out of luck, Davies. We can't collect any reward. It's against rules and regulations. You know that. All right, men, we're away. I'll lead. If your horses get the tire, signal for a rest. Now, let's go. In just a moment, we'll return for the second part of this true story of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, The Queen's Men. And now we return you to The Queen's Men. Look down there, man. Our first resting place. Looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, what ranch is that, Sergeant? Marshall's. The commissioner notified them we'd be here about sunrise. They're going to feed and rest our horses. Not to mention resting us for a bit. Well, I'm starving. I can't get yeah, now, look, now we're into this scrub country. We'll have to keep a sharp lookout. This is the kind of territory they're likely to hide out in, nice and flat. Looks harmless, but there are clumps of willows and... Large rock formations that offer pretty good shelter. Uh, how long are we going to stop at the ranch, Sergeant? Yeah, about three hours, I guess. Then we head for Crystal Lake. When we get there, we'll be met by another detachment. Corporal Ferguson, you return to Steventown. Maintain a patrol between these two places. Yes, sir. The rest of us will go on. Send another group back to patrol from Crystal Lake on. Now, we're not far north of the border, so if the bandits are proceeding on foot, they might be within 50 miles of here, or 50 feet. So let's all stay alert, tired or not. Yeah, say, look, Sergeant, that ranch house. Smoke coming out of the chimney. Looks like they started cooking breakfast. Yeah. Well, then what are we waiting for? Come on, let's go. Get up, get up. Get up. According to my map, this deserted village should be just around the next bend. There should be a clearing and the first buildings in view on the slope. 
How big a place is it, Sergeant? Just a handful of old buildings left, the inspector said. No one's been near it for years except the odd refugee from the law. Well, why doesn't anyone take steps to destroy it? Baker, it's plain to see you're still a rookie. Well, why, uh... You remember the bush killer who gave us all that trouble last year? Yes. Well, he was traced from one of these deserted clumps of buildings that are dotted over these western plains. They provide an excellent refuge. Very obvious to the Mounties, but the criminal mind isn't capable of seeing how obvious it is. Now I get it. A place for us to start looking. That's right. It's not often we find our man in one of them. We can usually establish if there's been recent occupancy and sometimes pick up valuable clues. Now, here's the bend. And your map's right. That's the first building, Sergeant. Well, pretty desolate picture, isn't it? What causes people to desert a community like this? Or disease very often, or a big fire. We going to walk the horses all the way? I mean, don't you think we should storm the place? No, no, we don't want to scare them off. No, we're just a couple of prospectors ambling into unknown country. We'll, we'll just approach it nice and easy. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello, Davies. Yes, Dave is here. Is that you, Baker? Yes. Look, the sergeant and I are putting up overnight in the town of Scarsville. He's said to call you. Uh, Scarsville? Well, where in blazes is that? Look, it's... Hey, incidentally, you can break the news to him. We scouted every inch Listen of the Crystal Lake area, questioned all the ranchers and storekeepers. There's no sign of him here. Yeah, well, we think maybe we've got something. Really? You can locate Scarsville on your map. It's about 30 miles northeast of where you're located now. Now then... About six miles due north of the town in the hill country is a deserted village. Yeah? We've been over it once this afternoon, and it shows signs of having recently been camped in. Track marks of three horses. Now, the sergeant wants you to join us tomorrow. We'll be scouting the surrounding area. But wait a minute, but how do what I find What kind it? of a question is that? You're a Mountie Davis, and we're your men. Now, come and get us. Careful with your rifle, Baker. Nearly got caught on a vine there. This underbrush is dangerous stuff. Yeah, thick too. Why, even if we came on the bandits, we wouldn't see them till we were face to face. And by that time, they could blow us up. Well, we're not going to find them in here. Yeah, then what are we doing in here, Sergeant, if you don't mind my asking? We're just skirting back to that open stretch to the east of here. Probably nothing to that report of the three men seen camping, but still... Was it one of our men saw them? No, someone else told Corporal Shaver. Couldn't even say exactly where they were, but, well, we've tramped around for three days. We might as well give the area a good going over. Ouch! What happened? That's a twig. It just missed my eye. Now, I'll be glad when we get... Say, there's a clearing ahead. Yeah, and our horses. Say, Sergeant, didn't we just leave two horses grazing there? Yeah. Well, do you see three there now? Yeah. Yes, it's Davies. Well, how do you suppose he found us? Davies, over here. Say, Sergeant, do you see it? See what? Over there, look. Smoke rising above the trees. Not a, you don't think it's a forest fire? Not much of a forest there. Sergeant, what's your guess? Campfire. Could be a campfire. Is that what you had in mind, Davies? That's what I'm hoping, Sergeant. Kind of unusual to camp in this scrub area. Well, there's no game around here. People usually camp for a reason. Yeah, just what I was thinking. So... Maybe it's Mercer. Mercer? Yeah, I guess I didn't tell you. The sheriff I spoke of, who arrested him in the States last year, got together with McNaught, the CPR messenger, and they decided the bandit was Mercer. Wow. He's pulled a lot of big ones. Yeah. Where are the rest of our men? They're all back at the lake, Sergeant. Well, then go back, round up a posse, and head back here, Baker. Yes, Sergeant. Look, I'll approach the smoke direct. You come along about halfway, then skirt the area, coming in from behind. If I find it's the three we're after... I'll engage them in conversation. But you stay hidden and keep us covered. Okay, Sergeant. And don't get that rifle caught in any more bushes. Hey, hold it. Shut up, I hear something. Howdy. Morning. Sorry to butt in, fellas. I thought I smelled coffee. Say, you have got coffee. I was right. 
Yes, we have coffee. Well, now, I don't want to intrude. I, I just thought maybe you might indulge a little bush hospitality. You're a Mountie, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for some men who held up a train. Oh, are you? Well, not around this neck of the woods, I guess. We haven't seen a soul. Mm, been here long? Well, quite a while. We're prospectors. I own a ranch near here. Oh, where? Not far from here. Go ahead, sit down. Have some coffee. Charlie, pour the man some coffee. You mean... You mean pour him some coffee? I mean pour him some coffee. You got any idea, Charlie? Oh, that's mighty nice of you. How's the prospecting around these parts? Well, not bad, not good. Gold's popular stuff. It's got its good points. Hey, these guys you're looking for, you got any leads? A few. Well, I hope you catch them. Well, I guess we'll get them. Well, what is it they say? The uh, Maltese always get their man? Yeah, that's what they say. Hey, what's the matter? I heard something behind us. Some sound. What did you hear? From the bushes. I'm just going... You better just stay where you are. What? You boys answer the description of the men I'm looking for. Throw them up. Now listen. We... You're covered from behind as well, so do as I say. You can come out now, Baker. Well, I nearly gave a show away. What happened? Did you get your rifle caught again? Oh, no, just stepped on a particularly loud tweak. What do you think, Sergeant? Think these are our men? Take a look yourself. We answer the descriptions. Well, you're wrong, Mountie. You got the wrong guys. Maybe. Well, if you care to come along to our ranch, I can prove our identity. We're prospectors. Well, I don't think we'll take any tracks into the bush, thanks. We'll just sit right here and wait. Wait for what? A posse of our men will be along pretty soon, so if you're planning anything, you can forget it. That coffee smells good. Have a cup. No, thanks. That's right, Baker. We'll just keep them covered. If they're who they say they are, they can prove it later. Say, listen, Monty, how about untying our hands, eh? How come all the rough stuff? Nobody's been rough with you, men. Uh, it's no hardship to have your hands tied. After what you tried to pull last well, night... you can't blame a man for trying to escape, can you? Especially if he's been falsely arrested. You men aren't very smart. If you were innocent, as you protest, there'd be no need for you to attempt escape. You know, you're going to have a fair trial, you know. Yeah, uh, I could have ripped down that schoolhouse with my bare hands. Exactly. That's why your hands are tied. They're going to stay tied until you're turned over to the provincial jail. Yeah, I hope it's more comfortable than the schoolhouse. Well, that's a grand place. You'll love it. Feather beds, all the comforts of home. Die for you. You better pull over to the side, Baker. Here comes another wagon. It's a pretty narrow section of road here. You got better stop, Sergeant? No, you won't have to. The other fellow seems to be stopping. Uh, hey there! He calling us? Uh, pull up a minute, will you? you? Better stop, Blake. Be prepared to deal with some interference. You think he's going to be? Oh, uh, you can't tell. Uh, which one of you Monty's is in charge? I am, sir. Sergeant Tarno. This is Constable Baker. Oh, howdy, Sergeant. Constable. Wait. <coughs> I'll get down. Well, this is a coincidence, running into you men like this. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm uh, Superintendent Blake of the Provincial Police. Oh, how do you do? Are these the men I've been hearing about that you captured yesterday? Yeah. I hear you put them in the Black River schoolhouse overnight. Yes, they gave us a bit of trouble, too. Well, my suggestion, Sergeant, is that you turn your so-called prisoners over to me and go back and do some more looking. Huh. I think you've got the wrong men. How do you figure that? Oh, I heard from one of the ranchers that you've made a mistake. Uh, that you've got a Mr. Jameson, a local prospector. He caught a glimpse of your prisoners this morning and feels certain there's been a mistake. And you're going on the opinion of this one rancher? Why, well, I seem to have seen these men myself. I think they've been prospecting around here quite some time. Well, they don't look like bandits to me. Oh, I think you'd better turn them over. You may look downright foolish, Sergeant, if you go all the way back to headquarters with two innocent men. Well, I'll take a chance on looking foolish, Superintendent. You see, I'm under instruction from my own commissioner and no one else. Now, now look, I represent the provincial police. We have jurisdiction in this province. And no one is withholding these prisoners from you. They'll be resident in the provincial jail by this evening. I'll be glad to hand them over to you there. All right, Baker, let's go. up, sir. Good work, Sergeant. It's the Mercer gang, all right. You know, that Mercer's a pretty smooth character. He almost had me wondering for a while if I'd made a mistake, especially when that police superintendent was so sure that I had the wrong man. Who was that, Sergeant? Well, while we were escorting them back here, about 20 miles out of Steventown, a man approached us on the road in a buggy, said he was Superintendent Blake of the provincial police. 
told me to turn my prisoners over to him and go back and look some more. He thought that I had the wrong men. Funny thing for Blake to do. Well, of course, I told him I wasn't taking orders from anyone but you, sir. Well, I must say, he got in quite a temper about my refusal. I've known Dalton Blake for 20 years. Never seen him lose his temper. Very controlled man. Say, what did this fellow look like? Well, it was big, fat fellow. Blake's as thin as a rail. Shock of black hair. And bald as a billiard ball. Well, I'll be... Sergeant, I think you nearly turned Mercer over to one of his own men. Well, I didn't come anywhere near doing that, sir, but I wouldn't think of it. Well, I, well, I certainly didn't suspect it. Well, what do you know about that? Mercer's last try, eh? That's right, sir. Very clever of him, too. But he'll never make another one. Yep. Train travel's going to be a lot safer from now on. So that was the end of the Mercer gang, Davy. Gee. Yes, sir. Everybody was plenty happy to see those boys under wraps, especially the CPR. What happened to him, Uncle Wally? Oh, I was found guilty, all three of them. Got a good long stretch, too. Gee, that's a swell story. Did it Did it all really happen, honest, exactly like that? Well, now I, I'm only telling it the way I heard it and, and the way I remember it. I was just a young Mountie then, and I listened to the story with my eyes popping. <laughs> just like you are <laughs> now, eh? <laughs> but me, I... Well, I had never captured anybody then... Uh, let alone tracking them down when they had the whole western prairie to roam around well, on, you know. Well, what happened next, Uncle w- Wally? Uh, uh, what do you mean, next? Well, what robbery happened next? Why, uh, I don't remember if there was another big robbery right in our area for quite a long time after that. And, uh, even if there had been, I wouldn't be telling you about it, young sir. Oh, gee, why not? Oh, come on, I guess it's time for lunch. Oh. One story at a time is enough. There'll be lots more stories for me oh, to tell you. Gee, Uncle Wally, I wish I was old like you and used to be a Mountie. Then I'd know all the stories myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Queen's Men, authentic stories of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Music under the direction of Sidney Torch. Script and adaptation under the supervision of John Adaskin. Produced and directed by Harry Allen Towers.